Hi, and welcome to our Alumni Spotlight podcast. My name is Nicole, and I work to tell our student stories here at Penn Foster. Today, I'm talking with Dylan Benvidez, and he graduated from our high school program. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks. And so in addition to being a Penn Foster High School graduate, you're also running for county clerk and recorder in your home county of Bureau in Illinois. Yes. Yep. Very exciting. So what brought you to Penn Foster? For me, growing up in a rural setting here in our county, um, it's about farming, it's about sports, um, family. And while those aspects are great, and I always love to be part of sporting events and get involved in my community, I really just, since a young age, just wanted to work hard and just wanted to um, get myself on the working field. And at my local high school where I attended, they didn't really have an accelerated program to graduate early. And with what I was wanting to do and where I saw myself and, you know, my two year plan or whatever, I just didn't see that that would work out well for me. So I decided to look for accredited high school programs that would allow me um, to uh, have a nice work life balance while still getting a quality education. So upon my search, I landed on Penn Foster and a couple of um, other friends I knew had also done Penn Foster. I had heard great things about their experience. And so after talking to my family, we felt like it would be a great fit for me. That's awesome. Um, I feel like that's such an important part. I feel like everyone we talk to, you know, they search for it and they're obviously looking for an accredited program, which is what's so great about ours. And it's more than just a GED. Um, you know, you actually get the the a high school diploma, but it feels like everybody kind of takes that extra step once they've like heard of other people or they know they have friends who have also done some of our programs. And I feel like that really helps out. I take it then mm-hmm. you had a positive experience with it. Um, what kind of advice did they offer you, if any, about enrolling? Um, my friends were kind of in a similar boat in the fact that they just kind of wanted to finish high school and they just wanted to move on. For me, it, I mean, yes, while I wanted to grow up and, and I wanted to enter the workforce and things like that, um, it was still important to get that quality education. And it was important for me to still have that high school diploma because, you know, yes, there are other programs that you can get that, you know, may offer a GED or whatever. Um, but it was important to me that I still kind of gave myself um, that high school experience, you know, if you will. Um, and so, you know, when I talked to my friends, a lot of the things that I had to hear was, you know, the staff is great. They're very supportive. Um, they're very articulate and clear in their communication about services they have available and different time frames in which staff are available. Um, I mean, honestly, I, you know, so many great things about the support and communication, which is huge because if you don't have that foundation set, you know, things can begin to crumble. And I found even through my whole time with Penn Foster that, I mean, I'd send an email or something and just an immediate response. And every time my questions were clearly answered and I was given the tools I needed to succeed in my own schedule. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, How did your family feel? You know, did they, did you bring this like proposal to them? You know, like, Hey, I want to try online school. I want to finish early. And how did they react to that? (laughs) Um, My mother initially didn't understand She's like, you know, Dylan, she's like, you're really involved in school and you have so many friends. And she's like, um, you're doing really well. And my father, it just, you know, he grew up in a different time where um, him being a little bit older, that you went to school and you went home and you worked. And so for him, at first there was, I don't want to say necessarily a fight, but there was misunderstanding from me to my parents because they had never... um, had any even thought about this or had ever even imagined a program out there like this for me. So at first it was kind of a, we don't really want you to do that. You're doing so well, you know, we're concerned that you may not structure your time appropriately, things like Mm -hmm. that. Um, But after, you know, just educating them, showing them, you know, more about the program and all the great things that are out there about Penn Foster Um, I, it really helped to change our mind. And then we came to the realization like, Hey, you know, I I have a two and I have a three year plan and I have goals for myself. And I really truly feel that this is going to be the best way for me to work hard, to achieve those goals and exceed expectations in my personal and work life. And ultimately I think it was that balance and that drive that really 
um, allowed them to kind of change their minds and, and come around to, yeah, this is a great program. This is a great opportunity for you. Oh, it's so nice to hear. I feel like that's also another common thread. Like initially parents are a little maybe skeptical and it's understandable, like you said, you know, right. this is, I mean, Penn Foster has been around a really long time, over a hundred years, but I think the concept of like an online high school itself is not so much now, especially I think in the, the COVID, this COVID period, but I think prior to that, it was right. a little iffy for people because it, it isn't necessarily the, the norm. Um, I think it is becoming the norm, you know, having these alternatives, especially when, you know, in-person schooling was canceled and everything was going virtual, even in public schools anyway. But I think, yeah, like having a different generation, it's still a little bit shocking to them. Whereas I think, you know, younger generations, it's a little bit more common, you know, you're doing everything online on a computer anyway, like bills or, you know, doing classes or entertaining yourself, you know, everything is kind of centered on, you know, the internet. So for us, it's a little bit, you know, more regular and it takes a little convincing elsewhere. Right. And I think something that's important to note too, is with COVID, a lot of high schools transition to Uh online schooling for a period of time. And so I was fortunate that within my family, my sisters, I have two of them, they were impacted by this and they did have to do mostly online schooling. And I was a huge resource for them because having this experience with Penn Foster, I was used to the digital classroom and I was used to the different tools that you would need to be successful in your, your essentially integrated schooling now at this point. And, you know, also it comes down to Penn Foster really helps set you up for what it's like to live an adult life because at the end of the day, I look at Penn Foster as they give you the tools to succeed and they will be there for you, but you really have to take that initiative and have to really want that education to get out there and do what you want. And in the real world, you know, when you're working, your boss is going to do the same thing. They're going to say, this is our goals. This is what to work towards. Here's what we need from you. And I feel like Penn Foster does a great job of setting you up for that kind of real world work experience that perhaps in the classroom, you know, in different local high schools and stuff like that, that you may not get because you have your teacher who's structuring your time. Now we're going to do this. And, and that's great. And I mean, certainly that works for tons and tons of people, but also I think the advantage of having online schooling where you can structure your time really truly sets you up for what it's like to be, you know, the 25 year old, like you said, paying bills, going to work, managing your personal life, finances, and all sorts of things like that. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. I think that that's something again, like, you know, that's so important because you're right. You know, there's nobody, there's nobody holding your hand once you, you know, high school or college, like you're kind of, I mean, there can be, but it is very different, right? right? If you're in a professional setting, you know, there's nobody saying, okay, well, like at this time I need you to do this. And then when you're done with that at this time, do that. So there is a lot right. of, um, you know, that independence that you need to learn to develop. Um, on that note, did you face any chat? Like, it seems like, you know, with your personality that this obviously was a good fit, but did you face any challenges? Did you struggle at first? Was it difficult to adapt to a different structure for your education? Oh yeah, certainly. I, I would, I'd be lying if I said I didn't, <laughs> but no, I certainly did. I mean, because again, you know, we're so used to, you know, going through the elementary educational system, you know, and it's very structured, and it's very laid out for you, and you're used to that face-to-face interaction, Um, and and now you don't really have that, and and that's a positive thing. It really is. Uh, Some people might be deterred by that, but really, truly, it really teaches you so many skills and allows you to accent upon who you are as a person and grow into yourself, and so in the beginning, my biggest struggle was some days I just didn't have the motivation to do much, and I didn't want to, and I mean, we've all been there and and, (laughs) I mean, that's not nothing to be ashamed of, but (laughs) human nature, (laughs) right. But at some point, you know, you you have to think about what do I really want for myself and what is important and ultimately a quality education is really, truly what was important at the time. Yes. Working was important. Family was important, but what it boiled down to is this is the foundation that's going to set me up for what I'm doing today or, you know, whatever career I find myself in 20 years from now, you know? Absolutely. So, and 
I mean, obviously like you're kind of touching on this, but just, was there anything specifically that you liked about online learning? Like, obviously it gave you a lot of independence and a lot of like personal development and growth, but is there anything, um, I guess more specific, I mean, those are very, uh, you know, those are great things, but they're not necessarily tangible. Was there something specifically like setting up your own schedule, um, being able to work on your own time or like the structure of the classes that you particularly, you know, liked? Oh, absolutely. I think honestly, and I, you know, I'm sure you could ask other people who have went through Penn Foster and they'd say the same thing, but really, truly, I really loved almost every aspect of my schooling with Penn Foster. I really enjoyed the flexibility to do learning at my own pace. I really enjoyed the fact that it seems like staff was pretty available at most hours of the day, even, you know, time zone dependent, there was still always support there. And I really enjoyed um, the just plethora of content that was out there for electives um, within the high school program and all sorts of things like that. And so, you know, really, truly, I, most everything about the program, I really, truly did enjoy. I mean, if someone came off to me off the street and asked me about it, I don't know that I could say enough good things, really. Well, thank you. That's so nice to hear. And I really like that you added about, um, you know, the availability of professor or teachers. I can think back to being in high school, like, doing homework at eight o'clock at night, and, like tearing my hair out. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and you don't necessarily have that. Like, you're not going to call your teacher up at home or even, and, well, back when I was in high school, you didn't email your teachers. <laughs> you didn't have that resource. You just kind of had to figure it out or you had to sit there and wait till the next day till you got into class to figure it out. And I remember like, right. oh, late at night, like ruminating on things, you know, like, oh God, I, I can't figure this out. And it would bug me, but it's so nice that, you know, you, you have that resource and maybe even the time zone difference helps a little bit in a sense. <laughs> uh, but um, so you did finish early, correct? Yes, I did. Yes, how, uh, was, how quickly did you finish? <laughs> um, I do believe, so if I remember correctly, it was my, so at the end of my sophomore year, um, I actually did a youth exchange to France. Um, so I was there for a couple months in the summer. And then when I came back, we decided to go with Penn Foster. And so at that point, I had had, I had collected quite a few credits already. So I do believe um, I still took a couple classes at my local high school because I was into German and I wanted to stay in the program. But I do believe I wanted to say it was, oh, maybe eight months later. I mean, wow. it wasn't too far along. Yeah. So wow. it was. It, yeah. Oh, wow. So um, what did you do once you finished? So once I finished, um, I actually entered the workforce just full time. Um, I was very fortunate. Um when I turned 17, which wasn't too much longer after that, I was promoted to a shift manager at a local restaurant. And uh, I was closing five nights a week, um, handling cash, running um, the shift, managing employees. And then actually the day that I turned 18, I got promoted to the assistant store manager um, and then just continued learning about budgeting, continued learning about uh, inventory, scheduling crew, HR items, payroll, stuff like that. And I, you know, had I not graduated early at 18, I would have been far more behind. And, you know, what I was able to accomplish in that time frame, I may have not accomplished till, you know, here we are today. You know what I mean? So uh, really, truly, the ability to be able to do that was tremendous for me. Oh, that's awesome. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Start on things. That's so nice. Um, you know, and obviously it's not for everyone, but it seems like it's very suited to, you know, your goals and you know your your trajectory on where you want to go. And, and speaking of, what did end up motivating you to run for public office? Honestly, kids and even young adults that are in that twenty to like thirty five time frame are really truly going to be the people who have to live with the decisions that are being made today and years from now. It's not the people who are in office today. That's not to say that what they're not doing is not important because it is, but it's so important that people of our generation get involved and have a voice because 30 years from now, if we continue letting people make decisions for us who are of that 60 and 70 year old age range, which is completely fine, but they can't plan for what our life is going to look like 30 years from now. I mean, if you look at 1950, no one would imagine 
what we see today in terms of technological advancement and where we are as a society. And so I think it's so important that the generation of today really hunkers down and gets involved and makes sure that their voices are being heard. That way we are able to set our kids up and the young people who are growing up through the system now to continue to have a thriving and successful life in the years to come. That's great. Yeah. As somebody who's slightly over that age bracket, I really appreciate that. But also as a mom, I am a mom. So I, I appreciate that sentiment even more because that is so, so true. You know, when, when I look at things I do, you know, everything now is kind of colored by like my vision of, you know, what, what is her life going to be like in 10, 20, 30 years, or even, you know, Mm -hmm. on that, when I'm not around anymore to see it, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, there are people at every level looking out for her. I think as a parent, obviously, you know, that's always your number one concern is, you know, the well-being right. of the child, but that's not always directly in your control. So when you can, you know, focus your attention or do something to impact that elsewhere or further down like the chain, it's it's really important. So I right. definitely appreciate where you're coming from with that. And thank you, you know, for that that um, introspection and that, that vision of, you know, what we're all kind of looking forward to, you know, we can't just look at what's directly in front of us. There's, there's a line far down that we have to kind of be envisioning. Um, Right. So you are running for county clerk and recorder. Can, for anybody, you know, who may be watching or listening to this, can you explain a little bit about what that position does? Right. So county clerk and recorder really deals with the business of the county. I mean, each elected office does in some way, but county clerk and recorder deals with land deeds, land records. They deal with vital records and genealogy. But one of the biggest things that a county clerk does is they're in charge of administering your local election. So that looks like they're in charge of training your poll workers. They're in charge of making sure polling equipment gets to the right places. They administer your polling hours. I mean, everything to do with the election authority, they are it. Um, and, and really, I mean, outside of that, there's other, there's other, you know, responsibilities in the office that are a little bit more minor, um, but it's a, I mean, it's a big office and they encompass a wide breadth of, um, uh, Those are all really important, you know, positions. I mean, to just, I mean, if you're handling like, you know, poll workers and everything that really does have like such a huge trickle down effect or trickle up effect, yes, so to speak, just because it does really impact so many different areas. Um, and as well, and that's such like a huge breadth of, um, expertise, you know, between business elections, you know, land deeds, all of that. It really takes somebody with a lot of, I think, patience, knowledge, and ambition to handle that. It seems like a pretty big workload. Right. But again, Penn Foster really gave me the foundation skills to be able to do that because I, you know, I can sit here before you today and I can honestly admit I don't have specific experience in each of those topics or in that field, but running that office comes down to time management project management, and leading others to create a efficient and transparent office, all things that Penn Foster taught me while running through the educational program of being independent, having that drive, attaining your goals and deadlines. And those are all skills that um, are so important to this office that have to be upheld. Oh, that's so wonderful. And I think that those are such good points to make, because I think sometimes people think of education just as strictly academic and they forget about the importance of those skills because even if you're not necessarily focusing on a, on a particular area of study or a particular you know job, I, I don't know any job that doesn't require those basic soft skills such as time management, budgeting, all of those things. Even if you know you're not applying it to a job, those are really important everyday life. So you know to be set up with that at an early age, I think really can put people at a strong advantage. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Definitely. I know like when I was younger, time management was not my strongest skill. <laughs> and it took a long time for me to work on that. I'm a little bit of a procrastinator. Mm-hmm. So I think it's great when those things can be taught at an early age and developed and cultivated. So I think that really just probably enhances, you know, your qualifications for the role you're in and also your work, you know, post high school in managing such a team, at such a young age, which like you said, you wouldn't have been able to do, you know, if you finished on a 
quote unquote, regular timetable. You know, you've, you've been exposed to those yeah. things much earlier than the average high school graduate. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm, I'm so fortunate and feel so uniquely blessed and advantaged because I was able to have this opportunity and not everyone can. And I think it's so important then that I advocate and educate others so that they can have that experience going forward, but also for all of those in my age group or even you know slightly older that didn't get this experience mm-hmm. that I really put these things to work. Um, not everyone you know, gets this opportunity and I would, it would be silly to miss out on this and to not apply hard work and this dedication for something good. You know what I mean? It's so important that people get involved and we do better for everyone else. Definitely. Well, thank you for that. And um, also, so one of the concerns parents and students sometimes have with online school, I think that one of the biggest discussions is the social aspect of things. Um, Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier that, you know, your parents said, well, you have so many friends at school. Why, you know, kind of, why would you want to leave that? Did you find that you were able to continue socializing within your normal group? Did you develop any? I, there are resources at Penn Foster, such as the student community, and they have various Facebook groups. Did you find yourself engaging with those? I mean, obviously, you seem like a very outgoing person, and I think you probably have to be to a degree to run the public. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of handshaking and all of that. So um, do you feel like, you know, that's just a natural part of your personality and that's it? Or did you have those social, um, you know, resources within Penn Foster as well? I, I never utilized the mm-hmm. Penn Foster um, social services, but uh, I did continue engaging with my friends from high school. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I also did still continue in the German program at my high school. So every couple of days, I would still go to the high school and still see uh, my groups of friends that way. And I still interacted with the different teachers that I had come to enjoy and develop relationships over my couple of years there. Um, and then outside of, excuse me, outside of uh, all of that, just between working, volunteering in my community, and different things like that. I still was able to have a wonderful social life. And and to be quite honest with you, I almost feel like I got more out of uh, my social life being in Penn Foster than I was getting being in the traditional high school setting. Wow, that's really interesting because I I don't necessarily, I I personally never really thought of it even in those terms, you know, it's usually either you kind of stick with your group or you access those resources online, but I never really thought about the fact that it gave you even more kind of mobility within, you know, timeframes and everything to further enhance those relationships. That's, that's a really great thing to know. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and for me, it was that, and that was a concern of my parents is, you know, you're going to become reclusive and you're not going to have time for your friends. And they they kind of painted this ill picture of what would happen, but I can, I can say on, on behalf of anyone that would go through this program, of course, we want to maintain a healthy social life. And of course we still want those things. So yes, we're still going to try and strive for that. So while it is a concern, I would say to any parent out there, or any student who has that concern, there are so many opportunities, so many opportunities, whether it's within Penn Foster, still getting involved in your local high school, or going out and getting involved in your community, you can still have such a thriving social life. Um, So what is the best piece of advice you could give to any current students or anybody who's maybe on the fence about enrolling? Oh, gosh. Or something you wish you knew as a student. Honestly, as a student at Penn Foster, I really wish I would have truly understood the opportunities that, cu- that can come your way. You, you have to want them and you have to, you have to work hard to get there. But when I was in Penn Foster, I would have never imagined to be sitting here today or doing what I'm doing. And so I think it's the best advice really, truly that I can give to someone is, set a plan for yourself and, and ask yourself where you want to see yourself in two years, four years, whatever that may look like for you and work hard, work hard, put everything of yourself that you can in success and the stories you'll have to tell and everything that you want for yourself will come to you. It may not come to you when you want or how you want it, but through hard work and dedication, you will get there. 
Oh, that's great. And so on that final note, I'll just talking about like two year plans and everything. Obviously your plan is in motion right now. <laughs> but how about further down the road? Um is there anything, you know, are you just specifically focused on this for right now or do you have any specific goals going forward further into the future? I, honestly, right now my big focus is just working part time um to pay the bills, but then also the selection. And what comes to mind is it's important to me to have a plan for if I don't win. I mean, we, we have to be pragmatic. We have to be real about things. And, and uh, as far as that's concerned, um, plan would be if, you know, I don't win, I'm just going to continue working and staying involved in the community and hopefully find, you know, in four years, my calling again, or maybe I run for a different office, different things like that. But if I do win, the possibilities are endless. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and share your story with the Penn Foster community. We really appreciate it. And we're all supporting you. Well, thank you. It was really great. I really enjoyed being able to do this today and share my story. Thanks.